Should you invest in Toronto or out of it? Which is a better investment, investing in Toronto or investing outside of Toronto? This is Yossi Kaplan, Toronto real estate agent, mortgage broker. And today we're gonna talk about should you invest in Toronto, buy in Toronto, condos, very expensive, homes, very expensive, or buy outside of Toronto, less expensive. So pros and cons to everything, like everything else in life. So let's review. So it goes like this, is the, uh, getting to the uh, second, uh, second, second half of 2019, there's a nice little restaurant here called Dash or Dasha at the Kingly building. Very nice. Kingly behind me. Got some units here. So Toronto is you're looking at, you know, a thousand dollars a foot, twelve hundred a foot, fifteen hundred a foot, two thousand a foot. <clears throat> Viable investment, of course, because of location, because of public transportation is literally non-existent. You can barely get on the streetcar these days. <laughs> Don't even try to get on the subway unless you like martial arts uh, taekwondo champion you're gonna get pushed everywhere kicked whatever so toronto is becoming very busy the infrastructure is failing you know we're adding more and more people but we're not uh, upgrading the infrastructure especially the public transport big problem prices are coming up everyone wants to be in a center because they want to be close to the center close to work although that's a very one type of work usually the office and as you come out of the downtown core, the price uh, comes less, uh, but also the jobs that those tenants will um, have will be of a lesser, lesser paying. So, so what do I mean by this? I mean, uh, if you remember the video I did with uh, Google and Shopify, and uh, there's the Shopify office right here the king side of the kingly building right that's the kingly the commercial side and then that's the residential side so people that uh, work here shopify or indigo you know they make 120 150 180 thousand dollars a year they can easily afford two or three or four thousand dollars condo a month most of these people do not come from toronto yesterday i was speaking with a friend of mine who just finished uh and teaching now uh, one of the uh design courses like the high-end uh, computer design course and he said there's so much competition in Toronto it's very very hard to get a job here so you know these are serious motivated uh, mostly young people uh, they got uh, either degrees or they study by themselves or they went to university but anyway um, they're paying an arm and a leg they're paying a lot for these condos and to rent them and they have to because the price is so high you know if you buy a thousand dollar food which is kind of the cheapest you'll find in toronto right now and that's like the base standard these days a thousand dollars a foot you know when i started uh, i bought less than thousand bucks a foot here at king of bathurst now it's the most expensive but that's that's what you get if you want to be the visionary okay um so in order to cover let's say you get yourself a 500 uh, square feet uh, unit uh the typical King West unit, a uh, 500 square feet, will cost you 550. You know, a little more, a little less, with the view and the building. Um, you'll get a rent of about 22, 23, 2400. Uh, it may not be even be enough to cover your costs if you're doing the regular 2080 mortgage. So that means you have to put more than 20% down, so more than 100,000, 20% of 500, because you got to carry that 400,000 as a mortgage plus your condo fees and taxes. So you know, if you're paying three or four hundred buck. Uh, uh, per each a hundred thousand you borrow uh, times four because it's it's four hundred thousand so you're looking at twelve hundred fifteen hundred sixteen half of the mortgage and then another say six hundred seven hundred condo fees on taxes so you know you're breaking even if you're lucky uh, but you may leak a couple hundred bucks a month so you can uh, put that back in by yourself if you need to or you can just put another 30, 50, 100 thousand dollars into the unit but then your RRI of course becomes uh, much less because your 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 uh, return is fixed um, because of the rent and your investment, right? R on top of I, so the bottom, the I, the investment, um, that becomes larger and larger. So the result is a smaller number, smaller percentage. So your ROI uh, decreases, goes down. In order to increase your ROI, make more money on your investment, relatively speaking, this is in percentages, of course, uh, what you gotta do is you gotta increase the R and um, make the I less. This keeps falling. Pretty good for four bucks. <laughs> so how do you do this? Well, you gotta buy cheaper properties. That's where your investment uh, is less. But you gotta make sure the the return, the rents coming in, are still as high as possible. That's tricky. That's not that easy to do. 
at the end of the day, you know, you can do all the calculations you want, but real life will also have some surprises for you, whether it's, you know, the property sits vacant or you had a deadbeat tenant or maybe you scored an amazing tenant that stays there for a long time so you don't have to replace them and they pay full market rent it's all possible you gotta do good you obviously gotta buy best units possible but for some people you know uh, Toronto is just too much it's too expensive and now we have a lot of openings and if you noticed uh, and if you're on the mailing list you've been receiving I, I don't post it on the blog I just don't have the time these days because there's a lot, so much stuff going on but I do send the emails and the emails uh, will tell you you know uh, some options so uh, a few of those uh, recently I sent this week is Niagara the Airbnb cash flow condos uh, we have about eight units left on the phase three the final phase those start in about um, 289.9 274.9 maybe one unit left and go up to like 500,000 for the townhome and then those are Airbnb legit so it means you can legally uh, rent them Airbnb one night at a time if you like there's a available property management that you can add that you can manage your, your own and those will do pretty good cash flow you know you're looking at about 1500 uh, according to the calculations I received about 1500 a month uh, in in cash flow which is really really good eighteen thousand dollars a year in your pocket I gotta cut off here so the continuity is gone but whatever um, Toronto versus outside of Toronto where is better to invest that's the video so what I was saying is um, when you buy in Toronto, it's so expensive that you may not even break even. And if you do, it's expensive. You got to invest a lot, a lot of funds uh, up front. Now, there's another option, and the option is goes to invest outside of Toronto. Uh, so I've been sending you DTK in uh, Kitchener, amazing project. You can get units in the 300s, yes, in the 300s. And that's serious. That's Kitchener Waterloo. That generates a lot of engineers. So these kids go to university there, then they come to town to make 180,000. So, but there's a lot. There's a lot of startup companies, a lot of technology in the kitchen in a, in a KW Kitchen in Waterloo area. There's Guelph and there's Hamilton, and um, I, I recently also sent you. If you're on the mailing list, Niagara. There's eight units left in the Airbnb cash flow condos. Those make about 15. You can make 1,500 a month on these condos, uh, according to the developers' estimates. It's 18,000 a year cash in your pocket. That's better than most salaries. You know, if you take the average $40,000 salary after you take a third for taxes and stuff and whatever waste. So there you go. You have about probably more uh, for one investment that you'll make like, working 40 hours a week or 50 hours a week. It's ridiculous, but that's how it is. So be smart about these things. But here's the problem. The problem, of course, is always psychological. A lot of people, you know, when we started uh, this wave of new construction, before it all started, uh, people asked me like, what is this and why should I do it? And why would I invest in a new condo? I don't know the developer, I don't know what's gonna be. And King West, are you kidding me? That's a terrible area. And uh, a buy on Yonge Street, that's a terrible area. And uh, buy by the Harbor Fund, that's a terrible area. Buy uh, east of Young, that's a terrible area. And I've, I've been hearing all these things, all these people for so many years telling me that's really bad and that's not good and that's not gonna work out in the meantime. You know, I will never forget that guy that came to, uh, 150 red path and he had in the hand the contract for two bedroom corner unit 850 square feet 399 and he wouldn't buy it okay and you know now the building is finished and it's been finished for about a, uh, a year or two and <laughs> you know 399 his 20 percent investment would have been uh 40 80 thousand dollars let's say this unit now is worth 800 thousand because it's you know like less than a thousand a foot whatever probably more but just say 800 thousand his pure profit would be 400000 on this unit. Plus the eighty that he put in, you know, less the expenses. So he could have made $400,000 on his, on his 80000 investment five times in five years. That's crazy, my friends. That is absolutely crazy. Um, but uh, most people just don't get it. <laughs> um, those who do, do really well, and they do it over and over again. What they do is they... They buy an investment unit, they flip it, or they rent it out, they get the money out, they get the appreciation, they get the rents, they, then they sell it, and then they get another one, and once they, they did it once or twice, they can buy two, and once they did it a couple more times, they can buy three, and once they did it a couple more times, you, you can maybe end up with a bunch of units, you know. Uh, this broker has been around for many, many years, all the person I really respect uh, told me many times that, you know, if you have about 10 units, um, you're done. Like you, not only you don't need to work, that, that's, that becomes your job, and you just manage your properties, and you live off the rent, and you can reinvest in all that. And that's really true. 
But once you come to Toronto, it's going to be more difficult, mostly because a lot of people that I speak with don't have the cash flows and the, and the um, deposits to do it. So what do you do? You, you open up your mind a bit and start looking at outside of Toronto. Now, for obviously, a lot of people already get this. This is not news to me, but it could be news to you because people are so programmed. First, they're programmed to like the pre-construction. Oh, you know, it's not the right area and the risky and this. And you kidding me, King West? And just like crack people there. And you know, the, the Drake Hotel, I was there the opening night of the Drake Hotel, which was probably 15 years ago. And a few months before, and, and the first... Uh, um, episode of uh, opening soon a restaurant opening whatever it was called that was about the drake and like all the stress they were going through but they managed to open it was amazing they had like a three night opening it just went on forever and you know the drake's one of the most successful chains toronto chains Tr uh queen street queen street became like the hippest neighborhood in the world or something like that you know these things happen and you have to have the vision and the guts to go for it. So now, if you have the vision and the guts, you're gonna start looking outside of Toronto because you can still find cheaper properties. DTK, uh, Downtown Kitchener uh, in the 300s. I have the data, I have the information, I have the units if you want. Uh, Niagara, there's about eight units left. Those are Airbnb, will make you good money. Um, there's another one I'm gonna be sending to my list today that's in uh, Burlington. Looks really good. Also, you can get units in the threes and the fours. So those are serious. I mean, you know, who's going to live in these condos? They're not he has. There's a, there are people like you and me. Um, maybe they're younger. Maybe their parents bought it for them. You know, Toronto is not the only place in the world. It's true that for so many years we became such a center that we refused to look at anything else outside of Toronto. And as much as Toronto, I love it. It's beautiful. There's other places too, and we have to take advantage of them. And, you know, Get in your car and, and drive to Kitchener. Get in your car and drive to Guelph. Get in your car and drive to uh, Hamilton. Even better, go get in the GO train. Put your bicycle on the GO train. Some of these, you got to look which, uh, which of the train that allows it. Go, um, you know, take your raincoat, if it's a day like today, and go ride around and, and see what's going on. I was in Hamilton uh, this summer, and I was amazed. Uh, first of all, we had like a really fancy coffee. It was like $4 for an Americano. So, you know, and there's, there's a lot of projects coming up and it's, it's, everything's happening. So Hamilton's happening, Kitchener, Guelph, K, uh, KW, Guelph, Hamilton, Brantford. Brampton is exploding, of course. Everything on North of Toronto is already like crazy, like Markham, Thornhill, all these areas. So those are done. Those are really for established families. But if you're an investor, you got to get in on the ground floor to get those appreciations, to get the rents. And how do you do this? You go to the next area, the next area, the next area, the next area. And in this case, the next area would be uh, the ones I'm telling you about. And right now, it's DTK and it's Niagara. And there's a couple more projects. If you're on the mailing list, you receive them or you will receive the next ones. If you're not on the mailing list, go to any of my website. You just send me an email or text me, whatever. I want to be on your mailing list. That's all you got to do. You got to take action. Some people say massive action. I say, just take a little action. Just Get on the main list, open the email when it comes, take a look, see, so, see what's in there for you. Okay, come have a coffee with me. I'll talk to you, I'll teach you, I'll show you how it's done. But at the end of the day, you know, if you want to make those cash flows, Sorry. go ahead. There's only one way to make them, and then that you gotta get you gotta get the investment. You gotta take the investment. You gotta you got you gotta kinda make your mark. Um, just looking on the screen is not enough. Just you know, scrolling through the um, emails or the videos, that's good, but it's not enough. You got to do it. So if you have the uh, the option to do it, the opportunity to do it, you got to do it. If you don't, then get together with a couple of friends. I did a video how to buy property with an investor and do it too, and that's also good. Okay. Um, so if you are going to buy a unit at five hundred dollar foot, you know. Um, the rents are not, which is half of the Toronto price, or less than half, if it could be a third, you know, if you compare it to 1500 or a quarter, if you compare it to 2000 which units are selling now for, and people are buying, um, the rents are not going to be half. They're going to be maybe two thirds, maybe 80% of what you get in Toronto, but they're still decent rents. I mean, you're still going to get $2,000 for a decent two bedroom unit. But the difference is that you bought this unit for half the price. So the risk, your risk, is a lot lower. And you can, it's more easy to find tenants because it's becoming more and more harder to find tenants that can pay three and four thousand dollars a month. I mean, yes, they're all here, the engineers, but also the units are very expensive. So, you know, it's, it's becoming more difficult. Not that it's impossible, it is possible. You know, all these units, and when I go see units, 
there's not a lot of vacant units. There's really a handful. Usually the vacant units are the ones that the tenant just moved because they're selling or they're flipping the units. But I don't really believe the reports are like thousands of units vacant. Prob may I don't know. They're definitely not here because you cannot find anything and there's almost no listings. You know, when I go with buyers, it's it's scary because there's there's bidding wars everywhere all the time. They're still here and they'll probably be here for quite a while uh, because we're adding so many workplaces, but maybe not enough bedrooms. Toronto needs more beds. Ontario needs more beds. Canada needs a lot more beds. 300,000 immigrants a year uh, plus natural immigration, which means they're coming from, you know, the smaller towns and the villages, the communities into the towns you know 90 percent of the world population li living in town that's why we're building up and that's why the density that's why we need to fix the infrastructure what i told you about in the beginning all that stuff nonetheless you got to open your eyes and start looking at investment opportunities you haven't considered before maybe you heard about it maybe not maybe you thought about it maybe not maybe me uh, doesn't matter go do it uh open your email look at what's there if you don't get an email just reach out to me make sure you get it uh, you can invest in Toronto for a thousand bucks a foot, fifteen hundred, two thousand. But you can invest outside of Toronto, not that far, an hour away or less, depending on traffic, uh, for half the price. Half price investing. It's like rolling the clock back five years or eight years. So I like that. Invest half price, Yossi Kaplan. That's it.